Hey friends, it's me again, Scott Hanselman. I'm going to talk to you today about some things that I think they didn't teach you in school, but I thought you'd get a kick out of it. And I think that this is a very special episode of Things They Didn't Teach You in School. I always liked it when Mr. Rogers would say things like that, that there was always a after school special and there was always a very special episode. So why would this be very special? It's very special because I've got some devices that I don't usually have. Um, some one or two computers here are mine, but most of the things I'm going to show you are not. That's very special. What is the cloud? What does that really mean? There's a lot of marketing, a lot of buzzwords. I was talking to a friend of mine who's early in their career. Let's say that they were under 25. This isn't about an age thing. It's more about a familiarity thing. Um, when I started out, the cloud didn't exist. There was your computer, and then there was someone else's computer. So one could argue when you ask the question, what is the cloud? It means it's someone else's computer. Just like when you rent a car, it's someone else's car. I treat my cars with a lot of respect. I don't want to hurt it, but I do tend to be really mean to rental cars. People tend to be really mean to other people's computers as well. And that's maybe okay because it's their problem. So what is a cloud? What is the cloud? Well, what I'm going to do, still trying to do with all of our videos, this in one take. I'm going to use my phone, which by the way is a computer, and I'm going to do a little handheld shot here. So let's hit record with our phone here, and we'll have a conversation. All right, let's talk about computers, and we're going to work our way up to the cloud. So this is a computer. This is a Surface Duo. It's a phone. It folds open. Look at those nasty those nasty uh, fingerprints. And that's a little computer. It's way more powerful than the computers that sent us to the moon, but that's a computer. It's got that nice Windows, that nice Windows logo there. Here's a computer. Surface Book 3. Lovely, powerful. That's my personal computer. It has a screen. It has storage. It has memory. Okay. Very powerful, not the most powerful computer. Here's a Surface Pro X. This is a computer, but it doesn't use an Intel chip. It uses an ARM chip. So some people might say that it's like a phone. It's meant for low power. ARM things were meant for low power. Intel things were originally meant for a lot of power. And now there's a competition. You could look at it as Honda versus Toyota, or Mercedes versus BMW. A lot of people feel strongly that ARM chips are the way to go, or Intel chips are the way to go, or AMD or something else. But these are all computers. They have storage, they have screens. All right. These are personal computers. These aren't really servers. Now, I could take my laptop, I could put it in the other room, and I could say, this is a server. How would you know? You wouldn't know. You would just go HTTP, whatever, whatever, and it would have a website or something that was going on, and that would be cool, and you'd be fine with that. I suppose if this did something useful, I could go and do that. Maybe I could take a really small computer, like a Raspberry Pi. We've talked about Raspberry Pis before. Let's go see if we have a Raspberry Pi. I could go over here, and I could find a computer. I actually have, I think, small PCs. Look at that. I made a label. And I called it small PCs and pies. Notice how I didn't really make a differentiation between what a small PC was and a pie. So I look inside here and we find, oh, look at this. This is an Intel. This is called a compute stick. It has HDMI, it has USB. So I could take that and plug that into a monitor and hook up keyboard, and that's a computer. I don't know if I would call that the cloud though. Do we have any Raspberry Pis? Here we go. Here's a Raspberry Pi Zero. That's a little computer. Now, what if I took a bunch of computers, any of these, and I stacked them on top of each other? I could maybe put them in a rack, organize them, and they could all work together. That might be a weird computer. I could take this surface, and this surface, and this surface, and they could all sit on top of each other. I could call this number one, number two, and number three. Maybe it could be Hanselman.com, my last name. And I would say, go to Hanselman.com, and this has my website, and this has my website, and this has my website. And we would pick one. We'd say, 
uh, let's have, let's let that one handle it. Oh, and then she'll handle it. And then he'll handle it. And they would take turns. Maybe this is www1 and www2 and www3. And they would take turns, like in a round robin. But it would be weird to have three different ones, I suppose. I could get maybe three of all the same kind. Maybe I could take a bunch of raspberry pies and I could stack them up on top of each other. Here's a bunch of raspberry pies. I've got six of them. Six raspberry pies all sitting on top of each other. And this is now kind of a rack of raspberry pies. And they could all do now the work of one, two, three, four, five, six computers. Now, what if I treated them as one computer? I'm going to think about this rack as one unit of compute. One U of compute, we'll call that. I could mount it like this. I could stack them all up. I could do pretty nicely. Look how I've actually made a nice power supply here, and I've plugged them all in to the same deal. So I can actually plug in all these computers, all these processors, all this storage, and I could go like this, and I could plug it in, I could stack them. Each of these is a quad processor. There's four processors on each Raspberry Pi. Times six, that's 24. Where are the hard drives? Where's the disks? Well, a disk on a Raspberry Pi is an SD card. So look, and pull out the hard drive. So what that means is that, let's say this was doing some work for me, and Raspberry Pi number three got sick. I could maybe swap that out or fix it. Or I could wait until six, you know, three of them are sick, and then I would maybe swap the whole thing out. But the other ones would still continue to work. And I could think about that unit, that one unit of compute as one thing. And I just plug it into one place. So I have what's called redundancy. That means that, well, these two could be dead, and these four will take up the work until I get around to fixing these. And that's interesting. But I'd only have one power supply. So if this died, these guys all go away. So that's kind of a bummer. So we'll talk about redundancy. So that's a computer. I could call that a server. It has no screen. It's a headless server. It has no head. It's got no, no screen. I haven't plugged any of those in. I'll just go and connect them to my network and let them all talk, and I'll just talk to them with a terminal. Maybe I'll SSH or I'll shush into those. I like to say shushing into computers. Here's another computer. Not the Legos, my friends, not the Legos. This is called a Synology, and this Synology is a little Intel computer with five hard drives, just like those SSD cards. I could pull the hard drives out individually, and if one or two of them died, it wouldn't ruin everything. And I have some redundancy because I have a backup battery. So if I was going to make a cloud, if I was going to make a server in someone else's room, I would probably want backup batteries and storage and processing and a network cable that goes out to the outside. So that starts looking like a server. It's a lot bigger than a Raspberry Pi. I could stack them up. I could have five or ten of these, and maybe I could rent them out. I could get a rack the size of a refrigerator. That'd be really cool. So these computers aren't really appropriate for the cloud. This starts to get to where we want. But the cloud is other people's computers at scale. What does that mean, at scale? You gotta do something, you're gonna do it big. Here I've got six Raspberry Pis. Maybe I could have 6,000 or 60,000, or an entire Costco-sized building, an entire uh, aircraft carrier, or 10 of them, or one in each country, or one in each state, or multiple ones in each region and dozens of regions all over the world. That'd be interesting. Now, I call this a unit. I said, that's one U. I just made that up. But what if someone standardized on what a unit was and made them, let's say, we're going to make ours all the same way, just like container ships decided that a container should be a certain way, that way we can stack them on a, uh, on a boat. Well, this is why this is a very special episode and why you've made it 10, and 10 minutes in. Look at this. Look at this, my friends. What is this? Is it a surface? It's not. It's got that logo. It's got that logo. It's got that logo. This is a one... U Azure Stack Edge. 
This is an actual slice of Azure. Now, Azure is a cloud, and the cloud is other people's computers. So this is a Microsoft computer. Microsoft doesn't always make their own computers. They have friends that make them computers. Now, can I buy something like this? I can buy a slice. I could buy a 1U or a 2U or a 4U. Each unit is about this tall, and I can stack them. Look how big this is. It's probably much more powerful than this, but it also serves a different purpose. I could stack these up and have dozens of them in one refrigerator, and then dozens of refrigerators in an entire warehouse, and then dozens of warehouses, and then I'd have some serious power. This doesn't look like any computer I've ever seen. So let's open up the top and let's see what's going on. So look at this. This is very special. I'm going to take my light. I'm going to show us a piece of Azure in my house. I did not buy this. Why did I not buy this? A couple of reasons. First, I don't have this kind of money. But second, I didn't buy this because this is something that you rent. This is a rental car. It's a lease. You just pay for it by the month and you get a slice of Azure. Now you wouldn't put this in your house unless you had an amazing house and you had a rack. You could totally do that. This is what you would put on premise or on premises. People like to argue about whether it's on-premise or on-premises. I'll let you argue about that in the comments. One of these, 10 of these, 32 of these stacked, thousands of them side by side. Or I take one of them, 10 of them, bring them into my building, do my work locally, and then I have a slice of Azure here, and then the rest of Azure out in the world. So let's look at this. Compare this to that little Raspberry Pi stack over here. There's six of these. There's one of those. Are they both computers? They are. A processor and a heat sink. A processor and a heat sink. And then memory. This is interesting. What's going on here? How much memory is this? I'm going to go ahead and pull this plastic off. That can't be important, right? It's okay. These are great because they're meant to be taken apart because if anything breaks, you want to fix it. How much memory is this? That is 16 gigs of RAM. 16 gigs is a lot. I have 16 gigs in my surface. That one stick is 16 gigs of RAM. That's a lot of RAM. That's 16 gigs. I have 16 gigs of RAM in just one of these computers. That's just one. Let's look here. What is this? Is this a stick of RAM? No, that's a slot that we could put RAM in the future. So this is expandable. A lot, a lot like your desktop PC. These sticks of RAM are really simpler, really similar. They are what's called ECC or error correcting RAM. But if we come down here and compare them to my computer, which also has RAM. You see my colorful rainbow RAM over there. It's the same concept. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times 16. That's a lot of RAM, but look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six. 384 gigabytes of potential RAM, two big processors. What are these? What are these? Look, they're fans. You think you have fans in your computer. Look how I pulled them out so easily. Why would they let you do that? That's because everything is swappable. See that little guy right there? See the little connector? Everybody's got a friend. And if I wanted to, I could swap that out and fix it. So imagine all of these cloud servers stacked up and I can pull them out like drawers. Pull it out and someone could say, hey Scott, fan number five has to be replaced and I'll pop in a new fan and I'll fix that. All of these things are, are swappable. They're identifiable with a name. Video cards, why would you need a video card if you're not gonna connect it to anything. Well, this video card here is special because this is from NVIDIA. 
And this lets me do what's called GPU, or graphics processing unit specific work, which is often used for machine learning that we might talk about in another video. So I have GPUs and CPUs, not just for gaming, but for, for hard work. I talked a little bit about power supplies. What's going on here? See here I can put my plugs. Can I actually take one of these out with one hand while I'm filming with a... Ah, look at that. Look at that, my friends. That is a... Let's see if I can not break that. There you go. It's a redundant power supply. I could have multiple power supplies. If that went bad, I could swap it out. That is the same as this, except I bought that on Amazon for $20. And this was designed by some smart people and put together as the Azure Stack Edge. So this is not a piece of the cloud. It's a piece of my personal cloud, right? I get to have this at my, my place. It runs a slice of Azure. I can have a local cloud, and then I can have it connect to a big cloud. This one is limited only by what I choose to put in it, how many I buy, but the cloud itself is unlimited because they can go and add these. Now, when I have it locally, it can run my applications only. But when I put something in the cloud, usually I share things. So let's say that this was in the cloud and you were running your website and you wanted to visit your website. You would have to go and find out where you were and you wouldn't just be on one computer. You'd be on at least three. In the old days, you could visit a website. You could visit yourself in the, in the server room. And you could say, that's the computer where my things are. I can do that in my house. I can come over here and I can say, where are your, where are your files? If my spouse says, where are the files? They're this, they're here. They're on these disks. That's where your photographs are. But when I put them in the cloud, I can say, well, they're on a thing that looks like this in a building that looks like Costco that has a lot of things in it. Where are the disks? Watch this. I push this button. Take off the front. I'll put this over here. What's this? One, two, three, four, nine. What happens if I push the button? Oh, look at that. We just pulled out an Intel two terabyte disk, 1.6. So let's pretend that that's 1.5, 3, 6, 9, 12, and some change. Oh, that one's a smaller one, 240 gigs. So that might be a, maybe a disk zero. Maybe that's, oh, that's a smaller one. Maybe that's got an operating system and the other ones have data. Regardless, you see how easily they popped out? They can be replaced. So when I put my program on here, when I put my file on here, it's going to exist in at least three places, but not three, three places here. Different parts of the building. What if I said, would you hold this for me? Can you put this in the cloud for me? I want to make as many copies as I can, but not on the same machine. Maybe I'll put it on this rack and the rack next to it, but that rack's too close. I'll put it on this rack a couple of times, on a rack that's far away, a rack that's on the other side. And you know, we're in Portland, maybe we'll put a, uh, some in Seattle and some in Japan and some in South Africa. That way we have copies everywhere. But I don't like thinking about copies, so we'll let the cloud handle that. And that's when the cloud starts becoming different than other people's computers. Because with other people's computers, you can, they can call you and say, I, I broke it, right? Um, I've lost it, I stepped on it, I dropped it. But the cloud, the software is automatically treating these machines as one unit transparently. So the cloud is a combination of hardware that is elastic and redundant. Notice that everything here is redundant. There's two of everything, three of everything. But the software is also redundant. If I pull one of these hard drives, if I'm a bad person and I sneak into the cloud and I yank out a hard drive, start pulling hard drives, the cloud should heal. The cloud should heal. And then someone can go and say, hey, fan number five and disk number seven, and I need more memory here, and can you fix this CD-ROM, and there's some power. All of that can live in something like this, times thousands, times thousands, times many, many countries. And that is 
an Azure Stack Edge, which is a piece of the cloud that you can rent for yourself and then connect to the actual cloud. So it's like local cloud, giant cloud. I'm not sure how you would call it, but that's why they call it the edge, because it's on the edge of the cloud, which is where I live in my house. They're going to make me give that back to them. But I thought that was so interesting to think about the difference between these light arm devices, these phone devices, to think about these bigger laptops, desktops, other ARM devices. ARM is a kind of processor that does low power. You could imagine an ARM thing like this. There's nothing about the cloud that requires a certain kind of processor. And then we think about other clouds. My little mini cloud in my house here. That's my edge. My little Synology. It doesn't run Azure, but it does run Linux. And the cloud can run Linux or Windows or whatever. This weighs a lot. It's very heavy. I'm going to have to ship that back. So that is a 20-minute gentle introduction for anyone who's working on the cloud, who thinks about the cloud. Maybe all you've ever seen about the cloud is a movie when they go into a server room and someone takes a USB key and they have to get that key copied in just a few minutes before the bad guys find them and say you're trying to steal our data. The cloud is full of these. It's massive and it's amazing. It's a combination of redundant hardware and smart software. And you can have a piece of the cloud in your house. You can build a piece of the cloud with something like this. Or you may never ever see or touch one of these and then you'll just work on the cloud. And that's cool too. So this has been, uh, I think, a very special episode of what they didn't teach you in school. Computer stuff they didn't teach you in school. If you like this, tell people. I'm doing this for dozens and dozens of dollars uh, that I use to buy tacos and toys. Um, this is not my computer. This is not my phone. I'm going to give it back to the very nice folks that loaned it to me. But, but these are my Raspberry Pis. So if you subscribe and you tell people about this show that I'm doing in my spare time when my children are asleep, then maybe I can buy another Raspberry Pi for my tiny cloud. I can put it on top. Thanks so much. I'm Scott Hanselman. Smash that bell.